Hello, today is the fifth recording for uh, the mom and pops uh, COVID small business blogs we have been having. Uh, we had a slight gap, for instance, our last blog, um, mainly due to our other engagements and a little bit of other activities which kept us busy. But today we are joined with a special guest uh, based out of Memphis, um, Mr. Jay Hoffman. He is a seasoned executive uh, with healthcare companies um, like Philips. And in most recent times, um, Jay has been involved with um, a company named Trade Bank as its co-owner. Uh, among other activities, he is engaged in Memphis areas. So welcome to um, our blog today, uh, Jay. It's, it's exciting to have you here today. Uh, thank you very much for the invite. I'm, I'm looking forward to our conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So, Jay, as we were talking about before starting today, uh, this is a very informal, unstructured conversation where um, Mom and Pop Hub, as you are aware, is into small businesses. We try to have uh, seasoned professionals as well as, um, you know, people you are in actually both the boards where you have experience as well as small business expertise. Uh, we try to learn about how COVID has impacted small businesses. Um, so we'd like to learn uh, from you um, how on a day-to-day -day basis you interact with small businesses and what are you seeing out there when it comes to the impact of COVID on small businesses? Sure. Um, so let me start off by saying that, um, you know, having been involved with Trade Bank now since January, which is really kind of focused, hyper-focused on the small businesses, Mm -hmm. um, in having the opportunity to deal with a diversity of businesses that are actually in the Memphis region, which are not unlike you would find in any other city, large and small. Um, and, and that is, you know, when COVID hit and um, things went into immediate lockdown, you know, the small business owners themselves um, started taking, looking inwards to say, well, what happens next? Because there was a lot of conflicting information that was, take, uh, that was coming out Mm -hmm. uh, on guidelines on, on what's open, what's not allowed open, you know, are you essential uh, to uh, the people or, right. or you're not? Uh, so business owners really had to try to maneuver pretty quickly mm -hmm. uh, to adapt to ongoing changes within the market. But as a result of the prolonged months where um, people weren't leaving their homes, they were only doing the essential things, um, what you started seeing is that businesses started seeing their revenues, their sales mm -hmm. falling off. Um, you know, to give you a, a couple of examples, uh, there is a company that does, a small business that does um, ink, cartridge, or internal refills. Mm -hmm. They're down as, as year to date, 55% on the numbers. Okay. Um, there is a restaurant chain uh, that's in town that has uh, several restaurants attached to it. They're down 80% in their revenues. Hmm. So, but on the flip side of, of this is that you have the trades. Um, really interesting that when people are at home, they have a tendency to take a look around their house or outside their house. Yeah. And if they have the means by which to do so, they started calling up the plumbers, the carpenters, the, and the, the landscape people. So there was a, a big divide that got created within the small business world, especially here in Memphis, where the trades are still incredibly busy. Uh, people are getting new closets and new additions uh, and so forth. But the people that are, we'll call it more retail, restaurant, hospitality, um, and especially here in Memphis with tourism, significantly down and they're struggling. Mm -hmm. And when you think about that, there was a report recently by Yelp who follows small businesses because sure. they count small businesses to recommend. They have already shown that 100, over 160,000 small businesses across, across the United States have already closed. Mm -hmm. And then another report that came out today is that if things don't change pretty dramatically, we're going to probably see that doubled up by the end of the year. Right. No, it's certainly in the middle of not to, you know, kind of divulge into politics or anything, but in the middle of an election year. Uh, it can be, you know, a turbulent time uh, with uh, whatever the election might entail as an end result and uncertainties and overall 
you know, we are sometimes more thinking from a stock market perspective, but uh, the overall customer sentiment, regardless of a large or small business, that's the, you know, theme which doesn't really goes too much into if it's dealing with a small or large business. So, yeah, I, I, I think that's great to hear some of those statistics, but also kind of something which, you know, we talk about in blogs like this. We had a speaker last time who represents an optic chain and she spoke about small businesses are not just about bottom line. You are investing in your community um, as well as, you know, a lot of things we talk about in terms of environment and friendly. So I think we always as customer have a conscious decision to make. And many a times, uh, you know, we fall for the cheapest price and that's, you know, there is no better time than the current time. Uh, to support these small businesses doesn't matter if it's American Express, Small Business Saturday, or any other you know company trying to do to support small businesses. But um, I, I, I think it's it's fair to say that you know of all the employment in the country, small businesses have fifty to sixty percent share of the employment so it's a domino effect uh, you know which can impact everybody not just the larger ones and so hopefully you know there are some dramatic measures at local as well as national levels uh, to smell to help these small businesses mm -hmm. and i think your trade bank it's, it's great that you kind of introduce trade bank with that covid you know, as a way for people to understand the concept, uh, but that certainly feels apt to the point that, uh, you know, if you don't have money, you have certain other way to trade your services in order to stay afloat. So a great concept. Um, and I'm glad to know that we have a, you know, co-owner from Memphis um, kind of leading that effort and helping small businesses locally. Well, interesting is that barter has been around since you know early man. You know, when yeah. someone was born and wanted a chicken, they 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 bartered between yeah. them. And today, barter is still. I mean, barter is large. It's a huge business, thirty billion dollars uh, as an industry. Mm -hmm. And when you think about that number, it's really large. Yeah. Uh, and barter happens really in a couple of different ways, right? One is you do what, what would be referred to as a one-on-one -on -one barter, where I have something that you may want. I, uh, you have something I may want. We have to do, agree on what the value of the, of the exchange is. And then you do the, the exchange and that's a barter. Right. But there's also um, uh, companies out there that offer what's called a barter exchange. Mm -hmm. um, the piece of the exchange piece is that you don't have to look for a one-to-one. -one, that when you become a member of this barter exchange that allows, it's, it's basically, it's a member exclusive. Yeah. That allows you that have, you have, certain value in a product or service that you provide mm -hmm. to acquire credit or dollar right. for what you provide mm -hmm. and then you're able to spend that in anywhere else along in that exchange with other members not once are you having to pull out the wallet or the credit card yeah. to, to, to expend because i'm sure that you can appreciate from a small business um, owner's standpoint that every time that you have to use a credit card to buy something, even though you may pay up your balance, there's always still that additional charge that happens. And if you're not paying up quickly, I mean, that, that percentage charge is pretty high. So yeah. I encourage small businesses to, to investigate if they have barter exchanges actually in their own world mm -hmm. uh, that they work in, because it can really help to offset some of their spend and conserve some of their cash. Right. But it's active. It's it's incredibly active. And, and there's you know, the Seattle Seahawks mm -hmm. bar. Interesting. So, yeah. So when you think about that, it, it's an it's an alternative. It's a it's another place that you can go to, um, especially as we're trying to come out of the, the situation with COVID. Right. The economy is picking back up. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to also share that. Um, some positive news, which is, you know, even here in Memphis, when I shared about businesses that are hurting or have failed, you know, closed, there are still a lot of entrepreneurial, small business minded people who are trying to start up new businesses. 
and uh, they're coming to the table. They're even even during this time, there is this spirit out there that want to go out there and start a business as they want to make it make a go for themselves. Yeah, I, I remember. Kind of makes me think. There's a friend who's um, you know family started recently here in Memphis a small business to do with masks and you know that opportunity as much as we i'm personally was like um you know not that i have any kind of embroidery skills or anything but looking at that and just the fact that um you know something as simple as that has been an area which i'm seeing in memphis as well as a lot of other businesses improvising and using i know I had seen a distillery in Pennsylvania. Oh, well, I haven't seen, but I had heard about a distillery in Pennsylvania transforming their um, operations from beer to sanitizing, mm -hmm. uh, hand sanitizer and hand soap, uh, you know, materials. So, well, um, even, well even here in, in Memphis, old Dominic's distilleries shipped oh. their, their production over to the hand sanitizer as well because the the the, um, the lack of hand sanitizer was out there and available yeah so, I mean, like i said you gotta love so when people are creative and you can adapt to a situation you know and, and make that pivot right yeah then you might be able to hold on but yeah. it's part of what what i also want to encourage um for people that are small business owners is that there are a lot of resource places out there and you know specifically um just here in memphis uh, actually, across the United States, there are those small business development centers. Mm -hmm. and we have a terrific one here in Memphis, um, headed up by a gentleman by the name of uh, Rory Thomas. And, you know, I encourage everybody to go there because, number one, they will get you lists of potential customers to go call on. They will help you do grant writing. They have uh, so many different tools at their disposal right. that as a small business owner, we, we have a tendency to kind of stay in our, our shell, our bubble. Mm -hmm. uh, but outside there all actually exists a tremendous amount of um, resources, expertise, and people willing to help uh, to make a go because you stated it earlier incredibly well. Small businesses actually are the heart and soul of, of this country. And they, we, we as small business owners uh, employ more people than the larger companies do. Right. And unfortunately, during COVID, those larger companies just made more money, mm -hmm. um, while we lost some. So it's time for small businesses to really work on helping each other by doing business with one another. Yeah, I think so. If I may understand, and I know I may have this answer, but just for the audience who is not, or maybe they may not have thought about barter or trade for a while. Uh, so the trade bank as a system, is it a B2B play or is it a B2C play? It's a B2B. Oh. And when, well, let, me that, let me take that back. It's a B2C, but then the B becomes a C. So, <laughs> so, you think of, so I'll, give you, I'll give you a quick example. It is something okay. that just happened actually recently. So I have um, in, in, in trade bank, there's a jeweler who wanted to secure gift cards, restaurant gift cards, to give to his best customers coming the holiday season. I mean, it was hard to believe that's right around, around, right around the corner. So he's one of those people that are taking action early. Yeah. So he, called, you know, he calls up the broker, broker says, great, I'll go get you the um, 100 gift cards that you wanna get from a, a variety of restaurants. Those restaurants supply the gift cards using, using the, the trade dollar. Uh, related to trade bank those restaurants in turn have now taken those dollars some of them have already bought signs hmm. um the co you know, covid related signs some of them have bought advertising to go out to go get more cash business to make sure that people understand okay. who they are where they are that they're open and how they're doing business mm -hmm. um, others have used it to um you know, fix their delivery trucks hmm. so just in, in a in a short little micro economy you know that barter exchange instead of anybody again having to reach into their wallet they were able to leverage their product and services because that one uh, the, the jeweler uh, was able to sell some of the their uh, product to other customers who might have been uh, a residential cleaning service it could right. be you know advertiser it could be a marketing person it could be whatever 
So that's why, you know, when you think about barter exchanges and why as an alternative payment model, it's very clever. And it's actually very, very easy because it acts just like a bank because at the end of the year, you get a 1099 and it is actually, it's a fairly regulated industry. No, that's interesting. I had no idea about the 1099 aspect. That sometimes, you know, as business owners, we are very much, and, and you know, with innovations, like I, I do say sometimes Uber as an innovation, but at the same time, I'm careful because it did, you know, on when you said about something regulated, made me think that, you know, a lot of innovations in these new concepts these days I've looked at with the lens of Uber and how, um, you know, there is a constant struggle Uber and Lyft have with uh, breaking those transport regulations in different cities or, you know, states or national levels. So that's very interesting that you mentioned that, you know, barter system as a concept generates that 1099 and is regulated. Well, it's, a legal, it's a legal tender. So yeah. your barter is actually a legal tender. Awesome. But, but, but it's part, you know, in, in, you know, kind of what um, mom and pop hub does um, as well on top of everything else is kind of an alternative uh, to how do you help businesses when you think about it. Yeah. Is that businesses are, uh, let me take a step back. When you think about people trying to get attention, because we all move to Zoom or other uh, platforms like Zoom, and everybody's just in social media, everybody's trying to advertise. The, the amount of noise that goes on on the web is insane. It's right. hard to be heard or seen because there's so much coming at us all the time. Right. So what do you need to do that's gonna help you to differentiate? What's, what, what, are you, what can you uh, do for yourself or for your business that's gonna set you apart from the competition? Even as a restaurant, you know, if you're a restaurant owner, I mean, you want more people to come to your place of business, mm -hmm. even though you may serve something that's very unique, but you still need to stand above. Yeah. So, I mean, when I look at what you offer with uh, Mom and Hub, uh, sorry, Mom and Pop's Hub, I think it's brilliant because you have that focus on the, on the small business owners and you're, again, looking to help drive the outside world back to the, the small players. And I think that's right. incredible. No, I think it's good because, um, yeah, the synergies I'm seeing from your end, and thank you for giving that jewelry, uh, jewelers example, because, you know, one of the struggling points even for me sometimes is I get into, hey, this is what I'm doing. And within two seconds, I've done with my pitch. <laughs> and, uh, so I had to learn over time how to give examples and everything like you're saying. So it was, it's good for our audience, especially because I think sometimes these age old concepts um, just get uh, a little lost with time or are at times even thought that, you know what, there is no future for this because it used to be there. So. Uh, so it's good to get that example. And yes, coming back to mom and pop hub, and the reason I asked B2B and B2C example is uh, we're, yes, we are in that common area where customer acquisition, existing customer acquisition is a major goal for us right now for the future version of the product we are working on. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's fair to say that there is customer acquisition but trade bank in a certain way. Um, and I think Jeweler's example was a great one because it is both B2B and B2C. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where, you know, I think we are solely a B2C play right now. Mm -hmm. um, and you are a little, in my opinion, it's a little heavy on the B2B side. Uh, but certainly I think it, it has, like you said, B2C angle as well, because somewhere the customer has to benefit. Uh, right. I mean, but they benefit for themselves, right? Because if you're a small business owner, the money that you take out to pay for something, whether it's yeah. for your home or for your business, is still coming out of the same wallet. Yeah. Maybe two different accounts, but it's out of the same wallet. Absolutely. And, you know, and even as a, when you, when I think of B2B, um, I think of more like a Comcast service is supplying a, um, an accounting firm more. Yeah. Uh, accounting firms supplying services to a small business for their particular books. 
Yeah. But in, th in this re in this regard, everybody's really kind of a consumer, even though it's small businesses are leveraging their products and services to buy other products and services, right? Right. Um, and when you think you know, in the, one of the things I really feel like it's a, a strength, a strong point for Trade Bank is the fact that not only you know are you able to keep your your credit card in your pocket or your cash in your pocket to buy the things that you need. Uh, but you also have this ready set, you know, long list of customers ready to come through your doors that probably have never come through your doors before. Yeah. And that's really true of barter exchanges. And oh, by the way, it's just not here in Memphis. When you think of barter exchanges like, like Trade Bank, Trade Bank is literally uh, across the United States. So not only are those trade dollars effective here, but they're, you could use, you know, if you're a Trade Bank member, you can use them anywhere. Right. And those like members that are in Atlanta that come to Memphis can spend them on you. Yeah. No, I think you, I know in our initial call you had mentioned, and that might be another way for our audience to understand Trade Bank, but you had mentioned about how uh, there are, um, you know, small businesses who get a chance to advertise on iHeartRadio and other bigger corporations using Trade Bank. And that's, you know, uh, sometimes there's a perception that the bigger corporations are unreachable for small business owners. So there is that advantage also you can highlight, you know, for our audience and how that audience benefits by those advertisement potential as well. Great example for that one. So there's a, a nursery um, that's out east of Memphis. Okay. And um, they have accumulated some trade dollars, but, you know, COVID days, they decided that uh, I brought to them uh, an opportunity to uh, get advertising on a traffic and weather report mm -hmm. on radio, on multiple radio stations throughout throughout Memphis. Yeah. Um, and quite honestly, it was it's only fifteen hundred bucks a month. But you think about how many times do you hear, oh. "Hey, Commander Chuck, what's the traffic like?" And they hit that how many times an hour? throughout the course of the morning, as well as in the afternoon, right? Yeah. $1,500. Mm -hmm. So what happened was, is that they normally start slowing down by July. Yeah. But recently in the last two weeks, they haven't stopped. They, they're, they, just because of, of the ability to have acquired trade dollars through trade bank, yeah. they spent that money as part of their marketing budget because one of the things that small business owners don't do is think about, have any marketing budget when they start up their business, always making sure that they're doing something that's an outreach into the public and in, into the communities that they serve or to the potential customer base that they want to bring in. Yeah. And the, these folks literally doubled their business. Awesome. $1,500. You know how many, you know how many crepe myrtles they had to sell to get $1,500? <laughs> I don't know, like 10, you know, <laughs> that they raised from seeds. So, when you think about, you know, to, so I appreciate you bringing that up because advertising is really not unattainable, mm -hmm. right? Because if you have new sales that are coming in in the form of trade, that you're able to then take that and go spend it on the iHeartRadios, yeah. uh, of, of the world or Cumulus um, or Grace Billboard or magazines, local magazines. There's local magazines all across the country, including here in Memphis, and you can literally um, advertise your business very, very low cost. You didn't, again, you didn't have to go create the cash, yeah. your wallet to do it. You did that because you were, you uh, were part of a bar exchange. And one, uh, one other um, uh, advertisement that I really enjoy, uh, maybe uh, everybody will enjoy this as well. There's a company called, uh, no, um, there's a company that does what's called indoor advertising. Mm -hmm. and if you ever go to a restaurant or a gym into the bathrooms and you see the advertisements, yeah, talk about a captured audience. Mm -hmm. People are sitting or standing there for X amount of time mm -hmm. yeah. and they have nothing else to read. Guess what they read? Your advertisement. <laughs> there's, no, there's no distraction. And that's no distraction. Know. Things with Facebook, <laughs> Google, and that did kind of play a role, as I was saying last time in our call, but there's a lot of noise, like you were saying, in different marketing channels. And uh, I think there is a little bit of disadvantage with these traditional channels lacking a good way to know how many people viewed 
that particular advertisement and other things. So there is some, um, you know, areas which um, I have heard from small business owners that, yeah, we can do non Facebook and other things, but how do we even know that how much conversion is happening? And that perception change with examples like uh, the one you gave, uh, you know, certainly helps to perhaps learn from those businesses. How did they measure across the entire spectrum? Um, I mean, I've never really, you know, in my, uh, even in my full-time career, never really considered advertising on radio as a option I would recommend to anybody. So it's certainly, you know, it's, it's an area which uh, intrigues us and, you know, how small businesses learn from that opportunity and uh, focus on, you know, not getting carried away by the trends in marketing, but more finding ways to get their bottom line achieved uh, with even channels which might not be as trendy or as spoken about in forums like LinkedIn. I completely agree. In, in um, People still listen to radio. There are plenty of studies that show how effective radio is. Billboard another thing I mean yeah. you're driving and this bill I mean, billboards are really incredibly effective but you have to have a message with it right and even if you do something on Facebook you do something on LinkedIn you do something on on the web um, you have to make sure you have a story you your your story needs to be well easy easily read and easily understood yeah and um, and, and then when you're out there like that again there's so many distractions. There's so much information coming to people. The question is, is what will set you apart? I think one of the biggest things, uh, like what you're, what you're doing and, and what I'm trying to do, which is I'm finding how to set myself apart by finding the right meetings, you know, um, becoming a resource, finding ways to be helpful to other people, but also just finding myself all over the place, right? Because people start to recognize me, start recognizing uh, the stories, start recognizing even my voice because I got that nice low voice that everybody seems to like. Um, even though this is not very pretty, uh, they still recognize it. You know? All of us have the same. <laughs> we're <laughs> beyond that point that we're trying to do anything on that area. So, uh, yes, you're right. Our branding and our voice, you know, certainly plays that. And that's, you know, kind of the point you're raising on how they're, but it's part of that is networking, right? And, and, you know, how you and I found each other is one great example. Yeah. And, and there's so many different networking opportunities, whether it's through a paid membership or it's through um, other means. The more that some people get outside of their shell, get outside of their comfort zone, the, the more that you're going to have people interested in you or your business. Mm -hmm. And I really encourage um, that people do more of that for themselves, whether that they're working for a small business, owning a small business, or even working for a large company. Yeah, no, absolutely. You should, I think there is a, all of us, you know, have that choice and there's no wrong or right. At the end of the day, your story has to be heartfelt mm -hmm. and something you believe that you can really, you know, sacrifice everything and just be there for that cause. So a genuine story, you know, requires that introspection and deep thought uh, to persist with the cause and not just the financial side of things. Um, and so that's, you know, certainly to your point, uh, there has to be that story uh, which resonates across uh, with people. Uh, one of the point, I guess, when you were explaining everything, and um, it made me think that for those, since Trade Bank is already up and running nationally, uh, Mom and Pop Hub, like we discussed, is in very early stages, and uh, I think we're doing I'm a great job. I'm very excited because you're, you know, through Mom and Pop Hub, you're, you're gonna, you're creating a differentiator. Yeah, You're creating absolutely. that additional value that people in small businesses really, really need. And so, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean to take away from what you're saying, but you know, no. don't, don't, don't lessen the work that, uh, that you're doing. 
Yeah, no, I think sometimes we are used to the fact that, okay, we need um, the results and everything before we start talking. And that's something I'm trying to pivot a little more that, yeah, we're doing some great job. The vision is there to focus on exclusive market for small businesses. Uh, but yeah, I think it's certainly uh, something which we will benefit by collaboration with you as well as you coach me into you know different areas like go to market and everything. But one the one point uh, I wanted to ask you was if let's just take somebody listening to this and they decide you know what I really want to give a shot to Trade Bank. Uh, what do they need to do to join Trade Bank? Is there a fee to it? Uh, is there a sales pitch to it more than yours? <laughs> Convincing <laughs> points you just raised. Uh, how how do people get started with uh, small businesses get started with Trade Bank? So, uh, first of all, if there's just more curiosity after someone was to see this, go to memphis.tradebank.com. Okay. Our URL. It's a very simple website. There's not, it, it has lots of information in there, but I really encourage a, a live dialogue because part of, um, you know, someone joining Trade Bank is, you know, really understanding um, their business. You know, mm -hmm. I, I a little bit of a, a deep dive just because, Trade bank's not necessarily for everybody because if you don't understand the difference between your fixed cost and your variable cost, or you, uh, ultimately your, your margins are so small, trade bank is probably not going to be right for you. Mm -hmm. uh, but so let me tell you, so find me, find, you know, uh, you know, my, my, my telephone number for trade bank is 901-251-1183. Find me there. If you yep. want to do email, it's my initial J H O F F M A N at tradebank.com. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's three things when you become a member, right? There's a membership fee and because of COVID, um, that is a highly, um, uh, uh customized mm -hmm. because generally, you know, the, the, the fee is 495 bucks to join, mm -hmm. but it's guaranteed that we would triple that money back. But because cash is tight, um, we we're able to do uh, different things. We will knock the price down. We can do some things where maybe we put some um, trade dollar debt, you know, or debit um, on the bank account and that and the initial order or uh, something that is done, it gets paid off right away. Yeah. So, uh, there's a lot of different ways. So I, sure. I don't know if I'd be afraid of that, but no matter what, if I don't bring you new business, mm -hmm. then I guarantee the payback mm -hmm. uh, what you, what you invested. Yeah, no, I think the fact that you could just within these 20, 30 minutes, you were talking about so many like the ink business, the restaurant running 80 person low, that speaks for the fact you're saying that hey, it's not just go to a website, sign up a form and you need to know the business. And Correct. that's where you're seeing that long term um, you know, benefit where you are honestly able to give them feedback based on, you know, your understanding of their business, how they're operating and everything, as well as just overall their understanding of the finances of their business, which helps you to be confident that this is a good fit. Yeah, correct. Because I don't, I don't want to bring anybody on that. I, I don't want to hurt anybody. And I don't, I only want to help. That's, that's what trade bank does. It helps. Mm -hmm. And, and you know the value that I always want to bring is does is it a good fit is the is the right fit there um, from a mutual standpoint? Yeah. So I, I want to spend time with the with the business owner. It doesn't take long because I, I I know what questions to ask, mm -hmm. uh, and I can do a lot in the way of answering questions that come up. But it's it's a very simple sign up process. Um, it's guaranteed. It's risk free. You come on, try it on. If it's working for you, great. There's no, it's not, it's not, you're not held to contracts or, uh, I should sound like a gym. There's a no contracts. You can mm -hmm. get out of time. But the, the point is, is that, um, the people that are active in it and are able to bring their product and services to hundreds and actually thousands of thousands of other, um, small business owners out there. It's amazing what it actually does for your cash business because, just as I mentioned a little bit earlier, it's like you become now mem a member of an, like an exclusive network. Yeah. And those people, when you do something with them, when you sell your product or service, mm -hmm. um, they tell other people. Right. Not the trade bank. They tell other people. 
their family members go, their friends now go, their yeah. other people outside of Trade Bank are now going to come and become new customers. Every person who is active in Trade Bank immediately know, knows, well within the first year, if not sooner, that their cash uh, revenues actually grow, as well as their ability to have earned that trade that they can then use to offset their cost. Right. No, that's that's certainly a great you know, way for them to know. And the fact that I've all, I've enjoyed a like, couple of interactions and, you know, I wish I had met you much sooner than I did. <laughs> so I think I was thinking though, there was a moment I was thinking, well, we're taking your advisorship for the go to market, but we need to also have me get a little more into networking side. And that's, you know, one thing which I have to applaud you that, uh, you come, you are certainly, you know, very thorough with your knowledge as well as, you know, you started off this blog with so many good numbers um, as well as the personal touch on how many businesses you remembered on top of your head without, you know, a script being there in front of you. That speaks volumes uh, that, you know, I think there is that genuine association and interest of your clients in trade bank you are looking for um, as far as that growth and uh, i think it's great to hear that you know there is all that um, translates into accountability at the end of the day where you're willing to commit that we're going to deliver results otherwise we'll find a way to take care of whatever you know the fee or other things were so that's you know certainly speaks volumes that you're confident on the product and its value yeah, because if 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 my if my if the members of Trade Bank, my members don't are, are not successful within it, then I'm not successful. Yeah. And even in my past, and and uh, I've you know got a long history in sales leadership and and, and working within healthcare. Um, you mentioned a little bit earlier. Thank you. Um, is the fact that I always always felt like the more successful I could help others become. Mm -hmm more successful I would get because that's really how it does work in real life. It's not about me climbing over other people's backs. It's me helping put people on my back and helping them to climb forward. Sure. I feel that same way for small businesses because again, we're just one small um, way <clears throat> to help small businesses. It's, it's not, again, not to replace what, what people are currently doing. It's a way to help them to grow their sales, offset their costs, keep some money in their pocket. Um, and, also importantly is to grow that network. Yeah. Um, you now we just did a, a, a member mixer hmm. last week. Um, uh, we provided food and drink in, in the restaurant. There was some live music and uh, it was great because we actually got to sit down with our, our members and people that had never met e each other before. They might have done business in the other ways. Uh, we're able to sit down and it was fun to watch these conversations take place about, do you know, have, do you have a recommendation, recommendations for here? Or, oh, I have, I know someone I need you to introduce you to. Yeah. That's so valuable. Right. That range of conversation and information. So, and, and we're helping to uh, facilitate that then. That's a win for us. Yeah. I mean, it's great you mentioned, because I was about, I was hesitant to ask this, but then I was, I was just about to give up on it. I was like, are you uh, having any kind of meetups or networking events where, you know, existing Memphis area businesses are getting together. That was a great segue. You already were like, this is what happened recently. It wasn't rehearsed, everybody. It wasn't rehearsed. Uh, um, so we do quarterly get togethers from from Trade Bank. But yeah. also, you know, there's there's a lot of other um, networking opportunities that are connected. So I think this is a great conversation and none of both of us can go on forever. I'm certainly always enjoying <laughs> you know, the conversation. Uh, but in interest of keeping the interest level uh, decent for the blog, uh, I'll certainly would want to wrap up for our audience. Uh, Jay, thank you very much today. Uh, well, thank you as well. I appreciate the conversation and appreciate you featuring, you yeah, know, thank you. all this. Um, can you